Hello everyone, it's Steve with Aptair Owners Club. Today we have a couple of goodies courtesy of Jason Hill. So Jason's always been putting uh, stuff on his LinkedIn page a little earlier than Aptair officially announces it, usually by a few days or so. And a couple of days ago, he posted this picture, which is a book um, that says Accelerator, and it looks like um, the storybook. And this is the storybook that he talked about um, in the design interview, where if you're one of the first 2000 uh, Aptera, you, one of the perks you'll get, you know, you'll, I think they've said a couple of things, they will be uniquely identified as the first 2000 vehicles, which I think will make them very collectible. And you'll also get these um, books. And, um, you know, this is a book probably going through the design story of Aptera and the um, and then obviously going over the design of the current iteration vehicle itself and not just the history. And this first picture that you see, it, like I, you know, it looks like the wiring diagram, but it wasn't very clear. And then just today, he released the kind of full resolution picture. Now, we, I downloaded this and it's not like the greatest resolution, but um, let's see, I want to go back and take a look at this. Um, and I wanted to kind of go over this and dissect this a little bit uh, with you guys and tell me what you think, because I'm just guessing. Like, I don't know any more than anyone else uh, about this, and I don't have any inside information on what this is. Like, no one from Aptera has told me that this part is this and this part is this. But you can pretty easily tell uh, what things are. Like, you know, for example, um, this is definitely the charge port. Okay, well, what's obvious is, is the blue is the low voltage system and the orange is the high voltage system. And I think that's pretty much convention in um, electrical engineering circles that, that uh, the orange represents a high voltage line. And you can see here in the rear, um, there's a bunch of low voltage stuff. This probably goes to the lights in the back and the latch actuators and the lock for the, for the um, back hatch. But this is the uh, NAX port here. And then this is the high voltage line for the charging and you see that then it goes all, if you follow that, it goes to this box here, which is probably the charge controller. And then you'll see this network of large caliber um, orange high voltage lines. And so um, this right here is the battery, where the battery pack comes out. And I'll show you what we mean by that. So if you look at this picture, this is the battery pack and you see this is the port for where all those high voltage and the low voltage lines plug in. And if you look here, that's where this would be. It's, it's plugging into that port right here. This is where it plugs in. So the low voltage lines are here, the high voltage lines are here. And if you have the launch edition or the, all, the three wheel drive edition, there's gonna be one going to the back. Here's an inverter. So there's a, here's to be an inverter for every in wheel motor. So it, here, the, here's the line, there's two wires coming from the battery, goes to the inverter, and then the inverter sends three high voltage lines to the motor. And you can see the same thing in the front. There's two wires coming out from the battery, going to a, an inverter on this side, inverter on this side, and then three wires coming from this inverter to go to this wheel. And, and goes to this wheel. And it looks like in the back, this is mounted transversely. And in the front, these are mounted um, longitudinally. And you can see this is why Aptera does not have a frunk. It's being, it's being used up by the inverters and by uh, the charge controller and probably the vehicle control system. And then uh, suspicion is by, we were discussing this on our Discord, that this is probably the 12 volt battery. And I suspect that that is, all, that is true. Um, I think that they're gonna be using a lithium ion 12 volt battery, not a lead acid 12 volt battery. That's what Tesla uses, is a, is a lithium ion battery. It's, they're quite small and they help uh, run the uh, low voltage system and they're constantly charged by the high voltage battery. Um, so you don't need a very big battery to, to run this thing because it's constantly being charged by the uh, high, volt, high voltage battery. Um, so what all these individual boxes are, I don't know, but uh, the, the um, wiring diagram looks pretty um, sparse, which is good. Um, and this, these are the lines that are being made by Yazaki. Remember, Yazaki is their wiring harness supplier, and Yazaki is also 
uh, probably the major wiring harness supplier for in the automotive industry. They they make wiring harnesses for most of the cars out there. And so when I looked at this, I realized that uh, it is it is pretty um, it is pretty simple compared to the volt the uh, lines. Like this is the low voltage lines on a Tesla, and if you look, it's much more complicated. This is a Monroe Live um, teardown of the Plaid model. But you can see that they have a lot more wires going everywhere. Yeah. And so it does look like this is a simpler system and should be easier to produce. You can, I, I'm guessing that this is like the door latch. And there must be a line going to the doors to actuate the, um, the, win the windows. I don't know, like this is, I'm not sure what this is. And I'm not sure what all this is on this side. Tell me what you guys think this is. Um, I'm not seeing where the wires to the doors would be. I was thinking this, but maybe they're just showing it on one side, that this, this is the wiring for uh, the door to actuate the door locks and the windows and things like that. This is obviously the, um, the thing to the rear camera system. And I, these look very thick, so I'm not sure. I, I don't think the sound system wires would be represented here, but maybe I'm wrong. Some of the other stuff in here is probably like HVAC controls and fans and uh, like wiring to control the fans for the HVAC system and stuff. And now we see um, why they have this large tunnel uh, down the middle of the thing. This tunnel, uh, is made to handle all this wiring here and probably handle some air movement uh, that's sucking in from the cowl and going across the battery and the cooling system. Now, looking at this kind of critically, uh, I have a couple of questions and maybe you guys, uh, and I don't know why they made these engineering decisions. I'm sure that there's a good reason they did. I'm not an engineer, so um, I, I just trust that they, they knew what they were doing. It does look like, I don't know why, they decided to put the charge port in the back and have this extremely long length of wire going all the way to the front to the charge controller here. And then I suspect the way it works is the charge controller is then connected like some other way to these inverters. And then the inverters feed the energy back to the battery this way to charge the battery. Now, a couple of things like why is this so long? And then why didn't they put this? this port in the front because if they put all the connections to the battery in the front then you wouldn't have to have this wire be this long you could have had it like end right here and you could have had a very short wiring and so if you had a front wheel drive only aptera if they would have put the charge port in the nose cone then the wiring to the charge controller would be like a couple of feet at most and then the wiring to the um the battery would be just a couple of feet at most but this time it goes all the way to the front, then it goes all the way to the back again, uh, which doesn't seem very efficient. It seems like it'd be much more efficient to put the charge port in the front, go a couple of feet, and then put the wiring like this, and then put this, uh, put the connections of the battery in the front. Now, putting it in the front would make it so that if you had a rear, um, wheel drive as well this line would have to be long but that's a single line being long instead of being two lines being long so i still think that's a win um, overall the other thing that they i guess they could have done is maybe if they had space they could have put the charge controller in the back and if you had a rear wheel drive system you could use the rear inverter to charge the uh, battery and then you would have this line um, go from here to here to a charge controller here and then that charge controller attaches to this inverter and it feeds into the battery here but then that, that would make it um, bad for people that had the front wheel drive only um, aptera so not sure why they did this i know that from a design perspective putting it in the back probably was easier because then you could hide it behind the license plate and probably making a cover in the front was a little bit more difficult but i don't think it's like that much more difficult i had a um a nissan leaf that had the charge port in the nose and it was a pretty easy latch you know you just kind of popped open and um and i think you could make it pretty flush so that it doesn't affect the aerodynamics uh that much if at all 
and then that would have made this wiring a lot less, uh, a lot shorter, which I think would be better. It's like easier to manufacture, it's cheaper, less uses less materials, just seems more efficient. And Aptera is all about efficiency. So there must be some reason that I can't think of. Um, and obviously, again, I'm not an automotive engineer. So th there is probably something very obvious that I don't know about that uh, makes it makes this a better design. Uh, but uh, just as a lay person, not knowing these things, that it just seems like it is a little redundant to, to move the electrons all the way from the back to the front and all the way to the back again. All right. Well, I, I think this is really cool that they're showing more of this and you see all this wiring and it looks a lot simpler and uh, easier and should be cheaper to manufacture, which is good for the sustainability of the project. And... Um, um, it, it just looks cool, other than these uh, these questions that I have. If someone knows the answer to the questions that I have, please put them in the comments below so uh, we can all be educated. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, thanks, as always, to our supporting members. and Have a great day.